I said it last year and I'll say it again. They're a shit football club. Shit people. Really. At, at their core, they are a failure. They are. It's ingrained in their blood and in their club's history. Failure. That's better. What's going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. Episode 229. We'll be previewing the round two clash against Carlton. So let's run the intro, jump straight into it. So just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts. They'll be popping up down below. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. And I think... I think he's gone. I think he's gone now. We can resume normal programming. So if you've been living under a rock, which I doubt any of you have, you would not know, or would you know? No, if you've been living under the rock, you wouldn't know that Collingwood would take on Carlton this Thursday at the MCG with a 75% capacity crowd, which is going to be huge, absolutely huge uh, in terms of crowd numbers. It's not a huge game for us. It's just round two for Carlton. You know how it is for Carlton. They look at this fixture like it's their grand final. They played... Their first grand final of the year last year against Richmond. They play their second grand final uh, of the year against us. And what better way than to to start their season off 0-2, and two, which I think is what will go down. So last week, Carlton uh, versus Richmond at in the first game at the MCG with, with crowds and stuff like that. Huge game, footies back, etc., etc., etc. Carlton, you know, lost by 25 points. They did play well, you know, as much as I fucking hate saying that. They did play well up until, again, the last quarter. Surprise, surprise. They just fell through and, and Richmond got on top of them like any sort of good team would. Um, and then our game, you know how our game turned out. Shit house. Uh, there was patches where we were really good and I really enjoyed seeing. and But for most of it, it was just, it was just abysmal, especially with the preseason that we had and, and you know, the, the personnel that we have as well. But I don't think that will be a statement for our season. I think it's just going to be a blip on our radar. So you would re so you would remember the last time that we played Carlton was last year in round 14 up at the Gabba, which is still weird to say because, you know, classic hubs and stuff like that. Jack Crisp had a day out. Steve-O kicked uh, two goals. Josh Thomas kicked two goals. Mason Cox kicked uh, a couple as well. And... A, a game that was a must-win for both teams looking at playing finals. It was an in, intense atmosphere, an intense game. Sure, you know, us from Victoria didn't get to go, but it was just as uh, just as nerve-wracking watching it on the TV that it would have been being at the at the Gabba watching the game itself. So this started like any other Collingwood Carlton game would start pretty neck and neck. Uh, up until about halfway through the third quarter where we started getting a stranglehold on them. And then Classic Carlton, they fall away in the last quarter, which we know that they like to do. It's one of their uh, many fabulous traits. And we just put our foot to their neck and really took a uh, hold of the game, ending any sort of final hopes that they had. And it was very, very, very fucking sweet to see, let me tell you. Like I said, we absolutely dominated that game, and it was probably one of my favorite games of last season, you know, excluding that West Coast game. 
it was a pretty well-rounded game from us. Everyone uh, stood up and did their bits. Sure, it took us till three-quarter time or the fourth quarter to really put our foot on the gas, but we beat them in every major category uh, statistically, and we were just a better all-round team. And what that game did, if you recall, was square up the ledger. We are on 127 wins each. And we've been behind for a long, 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 long time. A long time. We're finally on 127 wins each. So we're finally even. This next game decides who goes in front in their head-to-head. And it might seem a little, might seem minuscule, a little mini battle in the scheme of the 2021 season. But it's something that you want to get in front of against uh, you know, a foe like Carlton. One of the key areas in this game is, no surprise, the ruck battle, Brody Grundy versus uh, Pittenet. Uh, is that how you pronounce his name? I really couldn't give two craps, to be honest, because Carlton is not going to remember all their names. I don't really care. But that, ga- that's, uh, that game within a game, you know, that Grundy's ruck game, it's been talked about non-stop since his Bulldog game, since Tim English and uh, Steph Martin got on top of him. Buckley comes out and says, you know, Grundy's a proud player. He'll put his head down. He'll go again. And we know that Grundy will go again. And he, the thing with Grundy is he gets lots of the ball. You know, he's tapping. He's, he's, we, we always finish the game with more hitouts. It's just those hitouts go to opposition players. They get sharked. And I said it last week, and I'll probably say it again. Uh, in my review of this game. But it's our midfielders that have to turn it on for him. And, you know, there just has to be more of that communication. To win games, you need to score goals. And that's not what we're doing at the moment. We finished with 53 points last week or thereabouts. And we were one of the lowest scoring teams of the the round. And that's not what you want to see from a team that boasts Jordan DeGoa, Jamie Alec, Mason Cox, Mycheck, Will Hoskinelli, Josh Thomas, the list goes on and on and on. We do have a good forward line. Sure, we don't have a Tom Hawkins or a um, Jeremy Cameron or anything like that. But our forward line can kick a winning score if there's not a question of getting the ball into there. It's how the ball gets delivered there. And go back in any of my previews. This is all I talk about. The midfield to forward connection is lacking. It's lackluster. When we go in, it's just a, uh, you know, a helicopter kick in and... Um, we don't know where the hell we're going, and it gets turned over. Then the team counterattacks. It's all about lowering your eyes. It's all about finding the best option. We we play the best attacking football when we're quick, when we're direct. You know, you see Darcy Moore start it from half back a lot of the time, and it's just about getting the ball quick in and get Mason Cox one out. Mason Cox is going to do his best work when he's one out, um, and he hasn't got two, three, or four guys hanging off him. Because he's not going to mark the ball. They're going to hold him. It's not going to get seen. Classic. We've been here a million times. Another interesting matchup in the whole scheme of things is what happens with Zach Williams. Now, Williams didn't play round one because he was suspended. He'll play. He'll make his Carlton debut against us um, on Thursday night. You know what happened last time Zach Williams played us in the 2019 um, prelim. He absolutely slaughtered us. He was the catalyst as to why the Giants beat us and went on to um, play in that grand final against Richmond. He's, look, no doubt he's a good player. He's gone to a fucking shit team, but he is a good player. We have to nullify his influence. He's going to be playing mainly in the midfield. I think that's where he was playing in preseason uh, for the Blues. So he won't play off that halfback like he usually does. Be straight into the midfield. Maybe Tay Adams tries to clean him up. You know, you got Sam Walsh in there as well. And, of course, you got Patrick Cripps. Do we bring in a tagger to kind of influence that? You know, do we bring in Greenwood or even a main to, to kind of tag? Um, maybe a Greenwood to tag uh, Cripps or to tag Williams, or do we play Pendlebury? Do you need a tagger? It's just, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of scenarios, there's a lot of parallel universes where this uh, game can go. But if we can nullify either, you know, a Williams influence or a Cripps influence or even a Sam Walsh influence, it'll go a long way into winning this game. Predicted ins and outs. So I think... Henry will come out as a first gamer. Look, not because, you know, we should be giving the kids a, a go. Fair enough. He didn't have a great game. Obviously, he's, it's his first game. Get him a bit more confidence in the VFL, then bring him up. He's going to be an amazing player. Uh, so, Henry, Rusco, and I think Will Hoskinalia and Sire will be 
dropped. It's going to be a wholesale change. Buckley didn't said, no, we're not going to have wholesale changes. I'm telling you, I reckon there's going to be. Those four players will get dropped. Maybe not Will Hoskin Elliott. We'll see. But I think coming in will be, obviously, Sidebottom. Um, Darcy Cameron as well. So it lets Cox play deep forward. Darcy Cameron takes the ruck. Um, Levi Greenwood. And there's going to be a debut for Finlay McRae. He, from that VFL game, from all reports, elite user of the ball, left and the right side of his body. He's the he's the next best midfielder um, that we have, you know, coming up in the ranks. Just give him a go. Give him a go. We gave Henry a go last week. Give fin- Finlay a, a go this week. If it's not Finlay, give Bo McCreary a call. Um, love him. Bo is, is going to be phenomenal. He got, he's got good um, pressure acts, good defensive acts, can kick a goal. He comes in for Rusko, maybe. So it's going to be, I think we'll have another debut. Who it is, it's probably going to, I'm leaning towards Finlay McRae, but um, we'd love to see Bo get a go as well. So my big call for this game is that Mason Cox is going to put on an absolute clinic against Weedering. He's just going to take him to the cleaners. Cox is going to kick four goals, uh, and we're going to win by... Let's say 28 points. We're going to make a, not only a statement to you know, the AFL to say, yeah, we're here, we're ready to play good football, to the fans as well, to us, you know, to say, look, what we put up in round one was absolute shit house, and that's not the Collingwood brand. Here is the Collingwood brand on a silver platter. We will, you know, look to replicate this attacking game style. Throughout the rest of the season. I think that's what's going to happen uh, against Carlton. Anyway guys, that's just been my quick preview of this huge clash against Carlton. We need to, we need to bring out A game. Oh, let me tell you. I've been talking to Blue Abroad all, all week. And he's been giving us fucking shit. You know, just talking absolute crap. God, Carlton are the... Carlton are the, the, the pits of the earth. Carlton are... Are the are, are mice, you know, are, are the scum of the earth, um, and we can't lose to a shambles of a club like that. They've done fucking nothing for the last twenty five years, and they come here all bravado, chest out. Oh, look, Collingwood, Collingwood, you've had seven coaches in the last twenty years, mate. Settle the fuck down. Don't come at me with that shit. Say oh, bucks, bucks, bucks. Look in your own backyard before you come and say something about my fucking backyard and my beautiful basil that I'm growing, mate. All right, settle the hell down. It's going to be a good game either way. Um, look, am I nervous? A little bit. I'm always nervous going into a game. Do I think we're going to win? I always win. I always think we're going to win when we go into games. But man, I would absolutely love. I would one. I would love for this not to be a close game. And two, I would absolutely love to just demolish and demoralize these fucking blue baggers. I'm done with them. I'm sick to death of them already. Go, shoo, shoo. Go merge with Tasmania or something. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Tay family, tay friends, tay pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll see you later. Ooh la la. We'll be previewing. Oh fuck me. So just before we do, oh fuck.